Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode. Um, let me turn on my ring light. I'm praying that it works. Okay, it's working so far. I just had about 30 minutes of technical difficulties. I was literally fighting with my microphone and my light and my computer. And I'm also running off of like four hours of sleep. So I might have cried a little bit. Don't judge me. I'm not talking real tears. I just had a few little tears in my eyes because I was getting very frustrated and I thought that I wasn't going to be able to record my podcast today. <sighs> but we're here now. Um, okay, a few things to address. My ring light might stop working. Let's pray that it works. But um, it keeps flickering on and off. So that's one thing. Uh, the other thing is that the, if you're watching on YouTube, the video quality is going to be lower because my back camera is not working. So I'm using the front camera on my on my iPhone. <laughs> Sorry. Today is going to be interesting. Like I said, I'm functioning off of like no sleep. Um, sorry. <laughs> okay, so basically my camera quality is shit. My light is flickering. My microphone kept disconnecting. But here I am. We're, we're here. I'm just applying some lip gloss. So I kind of look like I have my life together a little bit. Oh, <sighs> days like these that test your patience, really show you how well you're doing mentally. And I got my answer today. The answer is not very well if I cried about my camera not working, but that's okay. I already knew I wasn't doing great. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I am doing okay. So <laughs> let's just get into our topic today because I've already been here for 30 minutes fighting with my technology. So I hope you guys are having a better day than I am. Today, we've got a really cool topic. I'm excited about it. I hope that it will be a kind of a fun episode, but also still very educational. I recently got some feedback from a listener whose opinion I trust and value. And he told me that I talk a little bit quickly in these, and he's right. He likes that I talk fast because, you know, it's natural English, but I do, I am aware that I have students of all different levels, and a lot of my episodes are graded at C1, C2 level, and it's not so much about the language. I think it's more about the speed at which I talk. So I'm going to try and talk a lot more slowly and clearly for you today um, so that we can grade this podcast at like a B1, B2 level. So I always appreciate your feedback. I'm always open to it. And if you want to send me any feedback, like you can email me, you can comment on the videos. Um, yeah, I'm always open to feedback and I really appreciate it. So today we are going to dive into the world of idioms. You know, those quirky phrases that often leave you scratching your head in confusion and kind of saying like, what? Because <laughs> idioms are expressions which are not always clear. They don't sound like what they mean. Every language, I'm pretty sure, has idioms and has these types of colloquial expressions, but English definitely has some very 
weird ones. So today we are going to explore some of the most common idioms and we'll also uncover their origins. So not only the idiom, but where did it come from? What's the history? So let's get started. Sorry, just taking a sip of my water. Oh, you guys, I'm getting nervous because my ring light is flickering. I think it's, oh, I think it's something to do with the connection of the USB port. I think I just fixed it. All right. Fingers crossed that I did just fix the light problem. Please, God, universe, whoever is up there, please let my technology work because I do not have the mental capacity to deal with technological problems today. Amen. Okay, so what are idioms? I kind of just briefly explained, but let me explain in a little bit more detail. Idioms are phrases where the meanings are not always obvious just by looking at the individual words. They add color and character to a language, but they can also be quite confusing. So let's start with a classic. Let's break the ice with the idiom, break the ice. So have you ever been in a situation where things felt a little tense or awkward and somebody told a joke or shared a story and suddenly everyone was laughing and chatting and a lot more comfortable. This is what we call breaking the ice. It means to initiate in conversation in a social setting, and it makes people feel more comfortable. So especially when you join a new team or like a new job, or a new class. A lot of the times I will do ice breaking activities with my students um, and it will be something silly like a game or a talking activity. You just basically want to do something where students feel more comfortable and can engage with each other in a natural way. So those are called ice breakers. So what's the origin of this idiom? The origin is quite literal. In the past, when ships traveled in cold climates, they would sometimes get stuck in big sheets of ice. Smaller ships, known as icebreakers, would come to the rescue of the bigger ships by breaking the ice and clearing a path so that the larger ships could continue on their journey. Similarly, when someone breaks the ice in a social setting, they are kind of clearing the path for a more comfortable interaction. Let's have a look at our second idiom, to spill the beans. Spill the beans! It means to reveal a secret, often accidentally. Imagine you're planning a surprise party for your friend and somebody slips up and tells the guest of honor, the person who the party is for. Oops, they have just spilled the beans. So spilling the beans means revealing a secret by a mistake. The origin of this idiom is a little bit murky. Murky means unclear. But one popular theory of the origin traces back to ancient Greece. In ancient Greek voting systems, beans were used as a method of secret voting. I think this is so cool and interesting. White beans meant yes, and black beans meant no. If someone spilled the beans they would reveal the outcome of the vote prematurely. Quite a blunder, right? Quite a mistake. So I think that's really interesting. And I'm learning for the first time where all of these idioms come from because as a native English speaker, 
you use idioms and expressions all the time, but you don't know where they come from, right? So this is fun for me too. All right, number three, to bite the bullet. So this idiom means to endure a painful or unpleasant situation with courage, with bravery. For example, if you have to go to the dentist and you're really scared, you might just have to bite the bullet and get it over with, get it done, go to the dentist and just do it. Just bite the bullet. So the origin of this phrase comes from battlefield surgeries in the past. So when soldiers got injured on the battlefield in war, before anesthesia, soldiers would quite literally bite down on a bullet with their teeth to cope with the pain during surgery. It was a way to endure the pain without screaming. So today, thankfully, we have better pain management techniques, but the phrase bite the bullet has stuck around. Number four is a slightly morbid one, a little dark one. It's to kick the bucket. To kick the bucket is a colloquial way to say that someone has unfortunately died. You might hear it in a less formal context. It's not really polite. It's very informal, so you might hear it in movies or casual conversation with friends. The origin of this phrase is debated. It's a little bit controversial. One theory suggests that it comes from the method of execution where a person stands on a bucket with a noose, a rope, around their neck, and when the bucket is kicked away from under their feet, well, you get the picture. They hang from their neck and they die. Another theory involves a different use of the word bucket, referring to a beam from which animals were hung up to be slaughtered, to be killed. The animal would kick the beam or the bucket during the process. So either way, it's both all the meanings of kick the bucket are linked to death. That's where the origin comes. That's where the origin is. So you know, it's easy to see why that phrase took on the meaning that it has today. All right, number five, let the cat out of the bag. This idiom means to reveal a secret or disclose something, um, which was not supposed to be disclosed. It was supposed to be kept hidden. For instance, if you're traveling, sorry, if you're planning a secret trip, and someone accidentally mentions it, they've let the cat out of the bag. This is very similar to spill the beans. Let the cat out of the bag, spill the beans. Very, very similar meanings. This idiom's origin is quite interesting. It dates back to medieval times and specifically medieval marketplaces where farmers sold pigs in bags. Sometimes unscrupulous sellers, that means like dishonest, would substitute a cat for the pig. And so they were trying to trick people and sell them a cat, which is obviously much like cheaper, I guess, rather than a pig. So if the cat was let out of the bag, their trick was revealed. So that is why letting the cat out of the bag became synonymous with revealing a hidden truth. Number six, I think this is quite a common one. I, these are all common ones. That's the whole point of this podcast episode, by the way. It is to have a look at some of the most commonly used idioms. And this is a very common one. This is to be under the weather. Have you ever felt like just a little bit sick or not really yourself? You might say that you're under the weather. This idiom means feeling ill or unwell, but you're not like super, super deathly ill. You're just a little bit under the weather. The origin of this phrase is nautical, meaning it comes from ships. When sailors were sick, um, they would be sent below deck 
like on the bottom floor of the ship away from the harsh severe weather that was on the top deck which was exposed you know to the elements so being literally under the weather meant being sheltered from the storm above much like feeling unwell keeps you from taking part in normal activities. I thought that origin was quite interesting. Number seven is to cost an arm and a leg. If something is very expensive, you might say it costs an arm and a leg. This idiom emphasizes the high price of an item or service. Like if you literally have to cut off your arm or your leg in order to afford something, obviously that is a very high price. This phrase is believed to have come from the world of art. In the past, when portraits were commissioned, the cost would increase with the number of limbs included. So like if you were having a full body picture painted, the price would be more expensive. If you were just having like a shoulder up picture painted the price would be much cheaper so yeah i think that's that's kind of funny um cost an arm and a leg the more limbs are in the painting the more expensive it would be to paint number eight is to hit the nail on the head when someone is exactly right about something you might say they've hit the nail on the head it means that they have uh precisely identified an issue the phrase comes from a quite literal origin. It comes from carpentry, which is working with wood, where hitting the nail squarely, directly on the head ensures that it is driven straight into the wood. Similarly, in conversation, hitting the nail on the head means making a precise and accurate statement. Number nine is one of my personal favorites because it involves food. It is a piece of cake. If something is very easy to do, you might say, oh, it's a piece of cake. This idiom suggests simplicity and ease. Where does this come from, though? We think it comes from the 19th century American tradition of cakewalks. This is quite dark. This is where slaves were forced to compete in dance contests, unfortunately, and the winners would receive a piece of cake as a prize. And since the contest was relatively lighthearted and fun, oh, maybe the, I'm sorry, this it doesn't say the slaves were forced to compete, but maybe they, maybe they did the dance contests on their own accord. I don't know. It says here the, that they were lighthearted and fun, but you know, who knows if that's true. So a piece of cake would mean something that was fun, easy, and enjoyable. Number 10, our final idiom. This is a super common one. I use this all the time, especially when I'm talking about making plans with friends or something like that. The ball is in your court. When it is someone's turn to make a decision or take action, you might say, the ball is in your court. This idiom comes from the world of sports. So actually from tennis. When the ball is in your court, it's your responsibility to return it to the other player, right? So similarly in conversation or in life, especially when you're making plans with friends, when the ball is in your court, it is your turn to respond or to make the next move or to reply to a message. That's what the ball is in your court means. And there you have it, you guys. Those are 10 super, super common idioms and their really interesting origins. Um, I would leave you with the idea, the most important thing that Idioms are a way to make your language more colorful and exciting and more natural and native. Um, native speakers use idioms all the time, so it's really important that you can understand them and that you also feel comfortable using them. 
I know that they're tricky and sometimes it might feel overwhelming because you feel like you have to learn so many idioms, but just try to learn them slowly, one at a time. Make sure you really understand them and then practice using a few of them. Don't try to learn too many at the same time. Just, you know, take it easy and have fun because idioms are supposed to be fun, not you know, stressful. I also wanted to say that I hope you enjoyed the speed of talking in this episode. I definitely was a lot more aware of trying to be slow and super, super clear for you. So hopefully this was a little bit more suitable for my lower intermediate learners. I care about you guys too, and I don't want you to feel like you are missing out And even if you're an advanced learner, sometimes it's just nice to have the option to listen to something slower. And if you find that this pace is a little bit too slow for you, you can always um, put the speed up, you know, put it on times two or something like that. All right. If you want more of a challenge. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.